G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video I'll be taking you through sendable data extensions and how to build your very own single customer view or marketing customer view in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Sendable data extensions are a key function of Salesforce Marketing Cloud because they allow you to have a data extension or a SQL table of your data which can be used for sending. On my example data extension here, it is used for sending is yes, which means I can specify one of my fields to be used as the main contact attribute for my data. Now sending to a data extension is one of the most common activities that you would do in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. During your email sends, through a guided send, simple send, or even a journey send, you'll almost all the time be sending to a data extension, and at that, a sendable data extension. So for this reason, it's really important to have a really strong and robust sendable data extension process in your instance. And this is where I see it going wrong for most customers. Their building and populating of their data is not quite right. The issues I often see is that there is no consistency in the field naming conventions or data that's contained within them. Sometimes there's too many fields, they're the wrong data type, or even there's lots of unused fields, making the sendable data extension really big and heavy. Additionally, I've also seen some people who have no process at all and simply use their marketing cloud as a list loading function, taking CSVs from their desktop and simply loading them into a sendable table and then sending an email to their customers. Again, not a great process. So what we do want is to understand how a sendable data extension works and how to build it to make sure we have a healthy and productive instance. Now a few things to consider is that your emails in Salesforce Marketing Cloud often contain AMP script or other programmatic languages that reference data extension fields. For this reason it's important to have some naming consistency and naming conventions. This way you don't have to keep changing your AMP script or server-side JavaScript in each email module because they'll always reference the same field headings. For example, consistently using the word first name for a customer's first name. Don't use F name or first underscore name, always use first name. Now speaking of, you don't want to mix up these table headings either. After all, your team members are human. And they may have some human error if there's some confusion over what the table fields are or what they contain. So again, consistency here is key. So what does a good sendable data extension look like and how can we build a single customer view or a marketing customer view? Well, first of all, let's have a look at where the SQL customer view or marketing customer view sendable data extension would exist inside of your instance. If I have a marketing cloud instance here shown by this orange box, you can imagine your data coming in from various sources. You may have Salesforce CRM connected, so your customer data comes through Marketing Cloud Connect into some synchronized data extensions. You also may have some business data or other system data in a data warehouse or otherwise, and you may have those files loading in through the Marketing Cloud FTP into some more data extensions. At the end of all this, of course, is your emails, the reason we're all here. We want to be sending different kinds of emails to our customers. Things like email newsletters, campaigns, retargeting emails, even some ad hoc and quick sales things. So for this reason, we want to have something that connects all these dots. Now, the primary purpose here, of course, is to make a sendable data extension, which we often call a single customer view or a marketing customer view or a master customer view, SCV or MCV, like common acronyms, some way of connecting this data. So an example of what not to do would be to have one data extension or sendable data extension for each of these send types. By doing this, you would have lots of different data sets all floating around, and these may have different names or different field conventions, even different sizes. And the data could come in differently to all these data extensions as well. This inconsistency can make it really difficult to share things like your email content blocks or modules, or even sharing sending processes between these different send types. So you don't want to have a manual process. That's going to be too much effort and again, open to liabilities such as mistakes. What we do want is something that's automated to bring this in and make it really easy for your team. Enter the MCV or SCV. So what we want to try and do here is make an MCV, a marketing customer view. Now this customer view is designed to be our marketing view or our data extension that's used for every single sendable or marketable customer if I wanted to press send right now. If I had a great big send such as an ad hoc deal, I would be able to send this entire list right now in one go. If I had a campaign, I would have to use some kind of sub list of this, you know, segmenting on something that's within this data extension to create a small list for a specific campaign. For a newsletter, it could be the same thing again. It could go to the entire list or to a small subset of this list. The goal here, of course, being this one data set is kind of the parent or the original source of data being used for all these send types. Now this data extension could be built from each of these components. We could have the customer data, 
such as their account ID, their customer ID, first name, last name, and so on, coming through from our CRM. We could also have some data coming through from the business systems. Things that are really important about this send. They could be coming into this data extension as well. And of course, Data Warehouse may have some insights or statistics about this customer, which may help us to target or personalize their content even better. I'll show you some examples of these kind of fields in a second, but for now, just imagine different kinds of data coming in through Automation Studio via SQL, building this main customer view. Once we have this view, of course, it means any marketer inside Marketing Cloud can use this data extension colloquially against all of their sends. It should always have the same naming convention, things like subscriber key, first name, email address, and so on, which means they can use this as a simple data extension for their email sends, campaign sends, newsletter sends, and so on. Now, not all sends have to come from the MCV. After all, there are sometimes some much more targeted things like a targeting or retargeting comms. For this, we could have another subset of this data. This could be a targeting recoms one built-in journey builder. But this data extension can still leverage the data inside the MCV, plus some data from Marketing Cloud to create that retargeting. Now here's the important step. The goal here is this MCV is designed to be the list of customers you could press send to right now and not get in trouble. So you want to have some kind of filtering step, some kind of activity above here, which makes sure that only data that's inside this data extension is sendable. And so here is your marketing filter. If you're doing this in Automation Studio, this would all be done inside SQL. Your marketing filter could be something like where account status equals active or not inactive, where their marketing flag is yes to marketing, and where the do not contact flags are no to do not contact. Things like this ensure that this final data extension for marketing purposes is only able to be sent to customers who want to receive marketing. So if one of your marketers was to send an email to this entire list, it wouldn't be a problem. Now, the other solution is if your business does require some non-marketing sends, such as transactional or service, you may also have a need for a single customer view or a non-marketing send view. To achieve this, rather than using MCV, we can move our filter aside, we'd have a parent data extension often called the single customer view, which is one sendable data extension where each row represents a customer in your business, marketable or not. Now, once again, you may have some rules here or some kind of filter. And that filter could be something along the lines of, only accounts that are currently active. That is anyone who could send something to for a service or a transactional purpose. So again, some kind of filter to make sure that only records on a one-to-one -one human level, you can currently be contacted for marketing or non-marketing purposes. Below that, you can then make your MCV. Now the goal here being that all the fields in your SCV can mostly be reused in the MCV, keeping that naming convention consistent. Again, this makes it really easy for your email marketers, but also for email developers, to make those fields, AM scripts, and other personalizations to be consistent across your entire database. So once again, you may then have this marketing filter applied in between your signal customer view and your marketing customer view. Your MCV can then be used to send each of your communications. Again, it could be a full send to a deal or a sale, a full send to a newsletter. If you do have some targeting for an email campaign, you could use a small filter data extension then, filtering your MCV on something like only where the resident or the customer lives in a certain state or territory, filtering that data down and then setting that filtered data extension as your email campaign data extension. Again, the key concept here is your data comes in from its source locations. It is being built into data extensions inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You then use Automation Studio using filters and SQL and so on to create a primary single customer view where each record relates to one contactable human in your business or database. And as required, a marketing customer view to create a, a record per customer who can be contacted for marketing purposes, which can then be used for your marketing communications. Now, if you are journeys and other things, like I said, having a breakout data extension per journey or per trigger is totally fine. The goal here is to make the majority of your ad hoc and manual sends as efficient as possible. So now that you can see why it's important to have this really strong MCV and SCV automated build process inside your marketing cloud instance, Let's now talk about some best practices for your sendable data extensions, specifically your marketing customer view. So a couple of key design considerations for sendable data extensions in Marketing Cloud is that for a sendable data extension to work, you do have to connect it to your data extension model. To do this, you of course use the sending relationship where used for sending equals yes, which means you have to have that field specified. Now ideally, you do have to have this field as a data type of text, ideally a maximum character count of 150 to 250 characters as well. Now for your MCV or main customer view, 
you want to have that as a primary key where each row represents that customer's ID, account ID, subscription ID or otherwise. That way it represents one unique contactable human per record. As for data extension size and composition, when it comes to data extensions in Marketing Cloud, as always, the less data you have, the lighter and more transportable that data extension is going to be. Having a master customer view or single customer view with hundreds of fields is going to be terribly inefficient. It may seem really convenient to have all your data in one easy place. Unfortunately, that means that every time you're doing a Marketing Cloud send or an SQL query, it's having to rummage through all that data. So a good design principle to have is to limit the number of fields in your sendable customer data extensions. Ideally, keeping this count down to about the 20 to 30 mark is good design practice. Again, if you do require it, you can do more. You will see some performance hits as you have larger fields with much more data, or if your field count exceeds about 50. Again, the goal here is to make one row per customer. So how do you choose what fields go into your MCV? Well, in my experience, I find that fields usually fall into one of three categories. A key or critical field required for sending or identification purposes. Personalization fields used for showing that data in the email or using it to create some personalization. And then segmentation fields, that is fields that contain data that are not shown to the customer, but they are used for segmentation or filtering or otherwise. So to show what this could look like, I've got a few sample MCVs that I've designed based on my experience when I've seen used in the industry. Now, for example, my first one here is a loyalty retail customer. Now their MCV is gonna have three kinds of fields, their key fields, personalization and segmentation fields. And of course, those key fields, once again, are required for identifying a customer and used for sending. As we know, for email marketing, we always wanna have first name and last name for personalization. Subscriber key, of course, as their ID field. To send emails, we need to have an email address and to send SMSs, we need to have the mobile phone and locale. Now, additionally, for marketing purposes, it's always good to have those key filtering flags for marketing consent. After all, if you send emails to a noted marketing customer, you may get yourself in some legal trouble. So having your fields like do not contact or their marketing opt-ins for their various channels or segments is also, in my opinion, a key field to have. Now, below this, we have some personalization. And for a retail stall, that could be something like their postal state and postcode. That could be used to identify their local stores or deals in their area or otherwise. You could use that to show them what the contact details are for their local contact center as well. Now for our loyalty retail customer, some personalization there could include their loyalty ID number. Now note that subscriber key should always be a text field. So the loyalty ID and the subscriber key could be the same value, but it's stored here as a number. So you can use that number for your relational databases. Additionally, things like their join date could be used for anniversaries. Their tier could be used to print in the email and show what tier they are or even change the color of the email based on their tier. And of course, their points is a great thing to show in every email, how many points you have. And once again, to make things more personal, you could have a home store for that customer as well. So having their home store name to print in that email would be super useful, but also the ID, once again, for that data relationship model to look up other attributes about that home store, such as their contact hours. Now below that is the third type of field in my opinion, which is things like segmentation, things you wouldn't show the customer, but you may use pretty often. Things like the RFM model, the recency frequency monetary values, showing the ranking of all those customers against every other customer, when it comes to their recency of transactions, their frequency of transactions, and their total monetary value. Now a last purchase date could also be super useful for segmentation purposes to show how recently a customer was in your store or buying online. You could break this down to in-store and e-com purchase dates as well. And for LTV, of course, to show who your longest and, la and most valuable lifetime value customers are. Again, used for segmentation purposes, so you can do things like only select customers with LTV value of greater than $1,000. So how about another example, this time from a mobile gaming company using Marketing Cloud? Well, once again, three kinds of fields in my opinion. We're going to see key fields, personalization fields, and segmentation fields. You'll see some very common similarities between these key fields. Once again, ID fields, first name and last name, contact flags and contact details. Again, this will be consistent across almost every industry. There'll be small changes, like in this example I've used install ID as another key ID field, but you'll always have these main kinds of fields for those key fields. Now below that, things get a bit more different. For this one, it's going to be, of course, a digital product. So it may have a global presence and therefore we may use for personalization something like a country code or a language code for personalization. 
Additionally, we may have something like a first install date to show how long this person's been a member for, and something like a rank ID, if it's a gaming app, to show what rank that member is. Now for segmentation, we may have some more critical gaming information to help us personalize and target our messaging. Things like their last login date and their last win date for a game they'll be playing. How many days since they last ranked up or how many games they played in the last seven days. These kinds of segmentation stats are pretty lean. They're just data, number, and billion and decimal fields, but they can be really useful to a marketer to make some really quick segmentation filtering for the purpose of their BAU sends. Again, that key purpose of the MCV is to make your daily BAU manual sending process as lean and efficient as possible. You should not have to do SQL or too much uh, more exhaustive filtering to do your basic sending process. You want to make it as lean as possible for your end user marketers. For the last example, let's have a look at an automotive customer. Now in this one, I've assumed it's an automotive customer with a global presence and we're not doing it down to a franchise level. This example, once again, the key fields are going to be very, very similar to before, always having those key identification fields, contact fields, and of course, flags for marketing. Personalization, again, it changes a little bit for automotive. We may have something that's a lot more related to that customer's interaction with that car brand or maker model or otherwise. So things like in their region or country, they may have their postal state and code, but we may want to do a lot of targeting about their last purchased car. So having details such as their VIN number is going to be really useful to look up the car's details in our database. However, for a marketer, we don't want to be looking up and doing, you know, lookups and queries and filters for every single send. So we do want some key information to help us personalize that message further. So we may include things like the date field, which again for segmentation to filter out customers who've got a car purchased in the last 12 months versus more than 12 months. We may want to have that class or model and detail of that model. So we can also filter, change the imagery of that email as well, based on the individual car purchasing customer. Now, again, it's in the personalization section here because all these things could be used to change the content of the email. We may use the class of that car to change the kinds of car images that we show. Is it a sports or a family or just an economy kind of car? The actual individual model ID, again, could be used to represent a more personalized make and model shown on the top hero image of an email for the customer. And the detail could include things like the year or color. Now that detail in a much larger field could be used to really specify that image used for that customer to make sure they see their car at the top of every email they receive. The segmentation though, these are not shown to the customer, but they could be used by the marketing team to segment. So things like that customer's interest in things like sales, service events, and test drives, we could use this to personalize the email by including that content or to segment the email to only send customers emails that contain these kinds of topics. Once again, the goal here is to make sure that every individual daily manual send does not require exhaustive filtering or SQL activities, but making it as lean and efficient as possible for our marketing team. Now, as I was saying earlier, this is in no way the hard and fast rules of how to build an MCV or SCV in your business. What this is is some recommendations of how to start and how to design it to make sure it's efficient and scalable for your entire marketing cloud team. You're likely to have a lot more fields than I've shown on screen today, especially if your business has some more complexities and more kinds of targeting for campaigns and products that you may have to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis. However, once again, keeping it lean and consistent is the key goal here. And before we close out, there is one last thing to consider. As a marketer, once you know what kinds of fields you want to use for your key personalization and segmentation fields, it's really important to go back into your business and understand where that data is coming from. Obviously your customer data should be coming from your CRM, be it Salesforce or otherwise. You may have some business or insights data coming from other platforms inside your business as well. If there are certain flags, fields, or data points that you need to get access to, it's critically important to understand where that all comes from and ensuring you can connect it by the various connection methods in Marketing Cloud so you can get that data into Marketing Cloud, which you can then use to filter and segment an SQL query into those SCV and MCV sendable data extensions. And I hope you found this quick explanation and recommendations into how to design and build your very own SCV and MCV in Marketing Cloud useful. Again, sendable data extensions are a key feature, so it's critically important to get this right to ensure your Marketing Cloud instance is as efficient as possible. If you have found this useful today, then I'd love to get a big thumbs up from you on the video and a comment in the comments below as well to let me know that you enjoyed what you saw today. And don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.